Okay, in the last lecture I was just talking to you about, uh, and I introduced how to make a bike pump refrigerator or a bike pump engine, and I introduced these concepts of uh, coefficient of performance for a refrigerator and efficiency for an engine. So this is going to be a short lecture just to um, do a more concrete example of calculating, uh, for instance, the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator. So we're going to go ahead and get a number for what that coefficient of performance is uh, for a particular example. Okay, so um, let's recall first um, this bike pump refrigerator. Um, so we had a PV diagram that looks, I'll draw this a little bit bigger so you can see it more clearly here. Okay, so here's our PV diagram. And remember, we had this um, multi step process where first step was isothermal compression from an initial volume to a final volume and then adiabatic expansion back to the fin initial volume and then uh, two steps where we absorb heat from the freezer or from the refrigerator side at this step and then come back to the starting temperature during this step. Okay, so um, like let's go. Remember, I called this step one and this step two, three, and four. All right, so remember our goal, I'm gonna, what I'm going to try to calculate here is the heat extracted during step three. So this is where we talk about QC is right here on this step three and then we need to compare that to the net work uh, done during this whole cycle net work done on the gas okay so in order to calculate this let's well let's do them one at a time let's do uh, QC first let's try to figure out how much uh, heat is extracted from the refrigerator. That's maybe the first thing to do. And let's be more specific for this example. Let's say um, we need some numbers here. So let's assume that the initial volume is uh, I, just to make up a specific example let's say it's 32 times bigger than the final volume. So this compression that we're doing from here to here reduces the volume of the gas by a factor of 32. Okay, um, and let's see, do we need anything else for specific numbers? Maybe not, let's leave it at that for now. Okay, so this is uh, so the heat added here is, um, okay, so this is the heat added on step three, okay, right? So we know, and this is one of our old formulas, right? Um, let's see here, we can think of it this way. The first law of thermodynamics says that, in general, if you're going to talk about the relationship between heat exchange, and work done, and energy changes of a system, this is a general statement that holds true. And in step three here, there are no volume changes and there's no other work done. So this is zero. Only for step three though. The other, well, steps one and two have volume changes and this would not be zero. Okay, but for step three only, we have this Q equals delta U thing. So that is, um, Okay, so we have some, uh, let's say, at this point, remember we, let, just let's call this 
has T low, so it's at some low energy. And here, let's this is a T refrigerator. Let's call it TF. So this is the change in energy during step three is going to be um, U F the energy that it has when it's at TF minus U low, which is the energy it has when it's at T low. Okay. All right. So it, using our uh, equal partition theorem, I guess we need to say what kind of a gas we're talking about. Let's see. Maybe. Let's assume, let's just keep it general for now. Let's say this is um, F over 2 NK TF minus F over 2 NK T low. That's just replacing the energies using equal partition theorem, relating them to the temperatures. Okay. All right. So we also know that um, for okay. So what we need to know really now is how does um, how do these temperatures relate to some of the known quantities? Uh, okay. Maybe I need to put a few more known quantities into the problem. Okay. Let's say remember this point. At this point, the, the temperature is room temperature. That's what how we set up the problem initially. Okay, so this and this is an isotherm. Remember step one is an isothermal compression. So this all along here, so this is still at room temperature when you get to here. Um, so if we want to know how low does this T low get relative to room temperature, we can use an additional fact which we know from adiabatic processes from before, we know uh, we know from uh, that this let's say v1 t1 to the f over two equals v2 t2 over f over to the f over 2. This kind of a statement is always true for any point uh, in an adiabatic process. So the step 2, remember, is adiabatic. And this step up here is isothermal. OK, so for the adiabatic part, we have this type of relationship. That's a fact for adiabatic processes only. OK, which allows us then to say that the T low is related to T room um, by the volume change. So we could say specifically that V, uh, let's see, this is a VI, so that's, and at that temp, it's at T low at that point. So it's equal to VF, that's this volume at room temperature. Over to that's at this point. Okay, so um, that says that if we solve this for T low, this if we okay, divide both sides by V i, um, that would give us a V f over V i. So V f over V i is 1 over 32. So this is 1 over 32 to the 2 over f power um, times t room. Right. So I, I, what I'm doing here is just trying to figure out what is uh, the room temperature, how this, this t low is related to room temperature so that we can um, move further in our calculations here. Okay, so uh, let's see. Maybe we should go ahead and assume a particular F here. So let's assume this is a gas with um, so air at room temperature for instance has F equals 5. So let's assume we're working with air at room temperature here. Yeah, that makes, yeah, then this is simpler. 
this is uh, just two fifths. Yeah, this is one fourth. If f is equal to five, this is. So that step from here to there, I just plugged in f equals five and took the two fifths power of thirty two, one over thirty two. Okay. So, run out of space here. Then, um, let's try to finish this this Q calculation. That's what we're trying to calculate is Q. So, Q equals five over two n k t f minus T low, and now I have T low in terms of room temperature, that is T room over 4. Okay, so I'm going to leave it in that form for now, and we'll keep going here. Okay, so the next step is to calculate this W net, but let's try to keep that result of what is the Q? So this is the QC. Okay, so let's not erase that. So how about... What is W net? All right. All right. So uh, let's recall some facts from, from previous lectures. So. I can write this over here. Recall um, for isothermal uh, volume change, you have let's we've we've done this calculation before, and K T natural log of Vf over Vi. That's If you look back in your notes, we derived that formula um, a long time ago. Uh, and similarly, we derived a different formula uh, for adiabatic volume changes. In that case, so this is for isothermal and this is for adiabatic. Um, let's see here. F over 2. This is a formula, again, that I'm just pulling out from some of my older, uh, older notes. Um, and here T, F refers to the final condition of the, of the temperature after some change. Vf over Vi to the 2 over F power. So th this formula, again, we derived it in the past in some of our previous lectures. So if we want to know what's the net work done here, that, remember that's, uh, that there's work done on this step and there's work done on this step. So we have to um, add those up. Okay, so um, let's say this is there's going to be some work done in step one. That's W1 plus some work done in step two. That's W2. Um, so the work done in step one is this, we can use this isothermal formula for that. So this is going to be a minus NKT room. Remember, this step is done at room temperature. And log of this volume fraction, which we said was uh, 1 over 32 for this example problem. And then the other term is going to have the opposite sign because it's going in the opposite direction here. Um, and this is going to be 5 over 2. Uh, 
and k. Now, in this case, the step, so what's the final, final temperature for this adiabatic step? It is uh, t low. So, and remember, we, we calculated that t low is t room over 4. That's the final temperature for this formula here. That's the final temperature here. So remember, T low is T room over 4 for this problem. All right. Then uh, the rest of this is 1 minus VF over VI. Again, is 1 over 32 to the 2 over 5 power. So, now, um, this, let's, so we've got these, whoops, I've got too many NKs in there. Okay, there we go. There's an NK, just one NK in that formula. Okay, so we have NK T room times, uh, so we've got this minus log 1 over 32. That thing comes out to be, um, well, let's see. Well, we could write it as positive log 32, just taking the minus sign, uh, taking care of the minus sign by putting that frac inverting that fraction in the log. And then this stuff, um, the 5 fourths, so we have a 5 over 8 and a 1 minus 1 quarter. So all that together, um, if I did my math right, is 15 eighths. Maybe I did that right, hopefully. Anyway, this W net comes, if you just calculate these numbers, comes out to be approximately 1.6 NKT room. Okay, so I'm just about ready to write down something here. So we have uh, this QC over W net. So we have QC is the 5 halves NK TF minus T room over 4. And then in the denominator we have A W net. Wait a minute, did I make a mistake here? So let's take a look at this for a second. Hopefully I didn't make any algebra errors, but if, if this is what we have for the coefficient of performance, then basically what, it, what I wanted to point out here, other than just give you an example of how to compute this, you know, using what we know about volume changes and work done and heat exchange during such volume changes, um, I wanted to point out that the efficiency um, depends on, well, first of all, it depends on what is the room temperature, and it depends on how cold uh, the freezer is, right? So as the freezer uh, approaches room temperature over 4, like if it equaled room temperature over 4, then you would get zero coefficient of performance. That means you no longer get any uh, heat flow, remember? And that's, what does that mean? That means that Tf is now equal to T low, right? T low is equal to T room over 4. So when Tf equals T room over 4, then the coefficient of performance drops to 0. So it's not like it's a fixed, in this case anyway, it's not a fixed number that depends on what is the temperature of the freezer or the refrigerator as it approaches T low. And that's generally true. Um, for these cyclic processes, it may not be a single answer. It may depend on... Uh, these parameters and how they change during the process. 
Okay. So I think that's it for what I wanted to show you, just to give you a concrete example of how to compute uh, coefficient performance, for instance. And similarly, if you were to compute efficiency, you're going to be working with these same kinds of formulas for work done and heat added and removed from the system. Okay, so hopefully that'll give you enough background to do those kind of homework problems.